day. Thank the Lord for for service of revival. And uh, we thank God for you being here and hope you had a good weekend thus far. All right. Let's turn to the hymn we'll page 356, Revive Us Again. Let's sing that this morning. Page 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 1st. Sing out loud. Let's go.
He said their churches, Brother Dwayne, completely washed away. Wow. He said one church, he said, you saw it sitting on the hill. He said, if you walked out the front door, he said, straight down. It breaks my heart. I told men in the prayer room, boy, we're blessed here in this central North Carolina. Amen. God, we could have been us. Right. I tell you what, but let's pray. And uh, that teacher that they had never found that teacher yet that got separated from my husband. He, she teaches in the elementary school, by the way, here. And she got separated in that flood and ain't found her yet. But pray. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll get closure one way or another, whatever the Lord will is. But. Uh, Let's pray for the meeting this morning. Pray for the preaching, Brother Wayne. And you pray the Lord to help him. I know he, he will. And pray for these others today that are sick. Pray for so many that uh, they're sick. Uh, I think Sister Gail, she ain't got a death in her family. We pray for them. They're having a funeral tomorrow for her. But pray for all these other requests. But let's pray today, God will anoint his man. God will heal him. Amen. Amen. God will use him. The first time I saw her here preach, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him, and all of a sudden, one red spot come up on his head. I said, man, that man going to have an uh, aneurysm. <laughs> Went down there, down there, down there, down there Brother Langston meeting, and he, he, his place is right down the river. And Georgia, that is the hardest place I've ever in my life. It was it was quite warm. It is warm. <laughs> it was hot. But, uh, but the Lord blessed. But I appreciate Brother Wayne. been having here for a long time. But you pray for these others today that are sick and pray the Lord to help us this Amen. morning. We're going to stand, good Lord, in prayer. You have unspoken requests, but be not going to stand, good Lord, in prayer. Ask God to help us this morning as we go and we worship today. And you pray the Lord to help us today. Uh, just do two verses of the song, Brother Mike. Whatever you're going to say. We're going to pray this morning. Ask God to help us. God to give us what we need. Brother Philip, bless the offering. Pray for the request. Heavenly Father, what an honor it is to be in your house again today, Lord God. Father, we come to you today, Lord God, ask him, Lord, if you touch us in one time. God, show us a mighty way, Lord God. Just help us this morning, Lord God. Send us help where you need. Do the work for your scripture, God. We pray you bless and anoint and touch the man of God as he handled your work this morning, Lord God. We can't thank you enough, God, for what we, what we are prepared yes, to handle this week, Lord God. Pray you show us a mighty way, God, just help us. Lord, we need that you need revival, Lord God. We pray God to revive the hearts and souls, Lord God. Of your children, Lord God. We pray you bless the lost soul. Yes, and God, in, God. God. I pray God that you come to me. Lord, can't thank you enough, God. My Father, we pray God. We be with our brothers and sisters out yes, Lord God. Lord, they enjoy it so much, God. But Lord, they hang on to their faith with you, God. I pray God you touch them, Lord God. And help them in their time of need. Yes, help them. Lord, can't thank you enough, God, for what you're going to do. Lord, we pray God to bless this offering. Let me use to uplift your kingdom, Lord God. We'll be sure, God, you honor and glory. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.
here. And I'm asking God, I said, Lord, if anybody gets revived, it'll be me. Yes, I sir. Yes. 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 Pray, Lord, you know, we need to quit pointing the finger and start pointing the finger about ourselves. Right. right. Amen. 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 I just thank God for letting us be here. And I'm sure God wants God want to do something today. Right. Amen. 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 Ask God, Lord, let it fall on me. Let it fall yeah. on me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I believe we do that. We get our attention on ourselves and what we need. I believe God will bless and God will revive. God will send me. But you can do that. Amen. Uh, Amen. Sister Lou, listen, is going to sing my first song for us today, and I hope she'll be able to I know she will. You listen to it. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs>
Think about the love of God. Well, yeah. Mm. I know how much he loved us. Sure he did. I'm glad he came to where I was. Yes. 1978, when I was on my way to hell. Amen, preacher. He loved me. Tell me, preacher. Amen. Like that song, girl, he loved me as small as I am. Mm. I'm glad he did. <laughs> he lifted up. Basically, turn that mic on, sister. Uh, uh, Melissa, we didn't have you on, but he got you on that one. I'm going to let her sing, get her singing another song. And good to be saved. Yes. Brings you back a lot of memories. Mm. Who he was, what you saved. And, I'm glad I am saved this morning, but you held her today. She's saying, I hope it's worship today. Let God work today. My father has a great big family. There are many children besides me. Coming in and out here 
at the Unity Baptist Church for almost 30 years. Amen. That's an encouragement. I'm Amen. glad to see there's still a church in Sanford, North Carolina, with the lights on. Yes. Amen. Amen. And more than just the lights on, but the Spirit of God is still at home. Amen. 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 And uh, because the Bible tells us in these last days there would be the churches of Sardis, yeah. And uh, Sardinian churches, and the Bible said about those Sardinian churches, they have a, a name that they're alive. They look alive. There's a lot of appearance that looks good, yeah. but the scripture said they're dead. Yes, sir. The, 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 the concept of the church being dead is, is the absence of the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. And uh, man, we've got a lot of religious institutions, and unfortunately, a lot of them still say Baptist on their side. Yes, sir. Some of them still say independent Baptist on their signs. Yeah. They're trying to operate in the flesh. Right. They want to do what pleases the flesh, what pleases the congregation, what pleases a man, and that rather than pleasing God, they've done it without the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. When you have no spirit, you listen to this preacher, you have no conviction. That's right. Right. When you have no conviction, you have no real conversion. Amen. 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 I, I'm not being judgmental. I'm just telling you what the Word of God would teach us. If you believe you can get saved without the Holy Ghost, you're all bad there. I believe you can get saved without emotion. I mean, you don't have to cry a bucket full of tears. You don't have to weep and cry an hour. I believe it's a simple request to heaven to forgive your sins and ask for it to come in your heart. I get that. But you'll never get there. The portal will never open. The yeah. door will never open. Amen. Amen. Without the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And uh, even in that story of John chapter 10 about that good shepherd, the Bible spoke about that porter that opened up the door. Yeah, like and uh, you'll have to have a porter in your heart to get you yeah. in Christ. Uh, that, the only porter that's ever got me into Christ is the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. 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 That's good. It's got to be the Holy Ghost. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. I want you to look with me in Deuteronomy this morning. Chapter number 24, Deuteronomy 24. Read uh, six or seven verses of Scripture and then a little thought that's on my mind about revival this morning. I trust the Lord will help us. I do want to say this. I sure appreciate um, Unity Baptist Church adding us to your mission family in the yeah. last several months. and it's just been a tremendous blessing. Preacher's right. I'll say more about it through the week. I'm not going to take Sunday morning time. But, but the preacher's right. The Lord helping us will be headed out uh, Eastern Europe. I leave for Romania on uh, Friday evening out of Charlotte. <clears throat> we were heading out of Nashville, but yeah. now we moved it to Charlotte because of the obvious conditions in and around Nashville. And uh, and so I'm flying out of Charlotte. We fly to Romania. I'll be in Romania for seven days, and then I'll be picked up by a missionary friend, Brother Keith Blaylock, and driven over to Bulgaria, which is about a four and a half hour ride. And uh, then I'm preaching for. I guess eight days in Bulgaria. Um, he sent me the schedule about five services in English and about six services and something like that in Turkish something or another. I don't know. Um, I'll have to depend on one of those inter I mean uh, in in interpreters. Amen. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so that's the schedule. And then uh, actually learned we're coming back into Romania for another church or two before I fly out. And, these men know I'm just at their disposal. They don't have to ask me. Um, just book me. Amen. Just go ahead and schedule it and tell me where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing and yes, we'll be there. So, But I, I said that to say uh, we'll be in Europe for 19 days this month. We'll be in Scotland for eight days next month. We've just come back from Honduras for eight days. And uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Uganda in the month of May for 27 days. We were in Honduras back in January. We made a two-week trip to Montana. I've been to uh, both Minnesota this summer and Wyoming this summer. Uh, the Minnesota trip was is, is a small church, and I'll tell you about it sometime this week. Not necessarily a mission church, but they are getting ready to do a mission church plant, and uh, we're assisting them with that uh, in Monoman, uh, Minnesota. So just a lot of things going on, um, but we couldn't do that if it wasn't for churches just like you. So thank, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm glad my family is kind of with me this week, all right? Mm -hmm. And you'll forgive my wife, but she had previous commitments this week. She's able to be with us this morning, but she won't get to be back, all right? got to drop her off to her sister, and they've got other things that she's committed to. 
And then somewhere my youngest will disappear because he's not going with me in Eastern Europe. So by the end of the week, you'll have me and my oldest, all right? And uh, he's going with me in Eastern Europe. So uh, if y'all need any work done around your house, let me know. I'll send him right on over. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> not grinning too much. <laughs> He, you know, he he, he, uh, he he's got he's got the body of a man. He ain't quite got the mind yet. He's got the body, so uh, we'll put him right to work. It won't bother me one little bit. All right. So Deuteronomy chapter number twenty-four, and uh, let's pick up in verse number seventeen, please. Deuteronomy seventeen, verse number twenty-four. Thank you for standing. This is what the Bible said: Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. Thou shalt remember that thou was to bond them in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheep in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may Bless thee in all the work of thy hands. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that when thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore I command thee, to do this thing. Reading there through verse number 22. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I want to look at this passage of Scripture chronologically. We understand that the, the text that unfolds before us takes place somewhere in the wilderness. All right? The nation of Israel, the Hebrews, as we would refer to them perhaps at this particular point in time, has been down in Egyptian bondage for around 400 years. And then uh, what uh, Exodus 14 calls by high hand, God brought them out of the bondage of Egypt. I like that. Amen. Amen. With a high hand. They didn't come out with their heads hung down. Yeah. They come out victorious. You recall, yeah, right. not to chase a rabbit too far. The Bible said that uh, they went and borrowed every man of his neighbor. And the Egyptians laid on them the treasures of Egypt. And they carried the treasures of Egypt out without ever drawing a sword. They that? didn't even have a sword to draw. Yeah. God helped them. And they, they literally spoiled the Egyptians in uh, the day of their departure. They go down in the wilderness of Sinai. Unfortunately, they sin against God. And they caused a wonder for some 40 years until an entire generation dies in the wilderness but God spared a younger generation. Amen. And uh, and, uh, and I don't know I, I heard that Ron Young Jr. say this. I thought how appropriate. He said God has never restored the generation that walked away but he will bring back that generation that's left behind. Amen. Amen. Man, I, I tell you God still has hope for the younger generation. Yeah. Somebody yeah. help me just a little bit right there. Yeah. And, uh, and so they wandered in the wilderness. We're not uh, uh, particularly sure at what point, point in time that uh, Deuteronomy 24 is given to us, but somewhere as the promised land comes into view. Amen. Amen. They, they are still wandering in the wilderness, but they've got their eyes set on something on the other side. Amen. Amen. And they're about to enter into a land of promise. The Bible declares it to be a land that flows with milk and honey. Amen. 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 What a description. Amen. Amen. Uh, milk and honey was considered the abundance of a land. And that they said this is a place that abundantly has the blessings of God. You remember the story the Bible said that they took 12 spies and they sent them out into the land to spy out the land to see what it was and to see who the people were because they had no idea. They just come out of Egypt 400 years as slaves in the land of Egypt. And, and, uh, and uh, they sent those spies out, Brother Ricky, to spy out the land. The Bible described it. They said they go down into the valley of Eskol. When they went down to the valley of Eskol, they said they cut a cluster uh -huh. of grapes. And the scripture said 
it was at the time of the first fruit. So it's not the peak of the harvest. Yeah. It's the beginning of the harvest. Uh, Amen. Yeah. And he said the cluster of grapes was so big that it took two men to carry it. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's a cluster of grapes. Somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. 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 said the great theological discussion was, was it the size of the grapes or the number of the grapes? Amen. Amen. I don't have any idea. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brother May said he thought it was the size of the grapes. He said yeah. he thought they grew about the size of a basketball. <laughs> he said he always preached and he'd say they came down to a place where they had to ford the river. Yeah. One of those spies was a little bit of a girly fella and he had pretty hair and he didn't want to get his hair wet. And so he reached over and he pulled one of those grapes off of the cluster took his pin knife out, cut the hole in the top of it, sucked all the insides out, turned it inside out, pulled it over his head like a shower cap, and poured it in. Amen. Now, I didn't find that in the Bible. I understand that. But I did find where it said it's a land that flows with milk and honey. He did tell them that when you get to the promised land, and that you're going to live in houses that you will not be on that. Yeah. And he said you're going to eat corn that you did not harvest. Uh, uh, and he said you're going to clean grapes from vineyards uh, and that you did not plant. He uh, said this is what I'm going to give you uh, as uh, and the people of God. I'd say that's a pretty great blessing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so the children of Israel are wandering in the wilderness uh, uh, perhaps near the end of a 40 year sojourn uh, and they're, 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 they're not literally, but almost standing on the brinks of the Jordan. Uh, and they're getting ready to look over into the promised land that God's going to give thee on that. And God speaks to them in Deuteronomy 24. And what he says to them in Deuteronomy 24 is this. He said, before you go across the river and before you inherit the blessings that I have prepared for you, and that I have purpose for you. He said there's some things you're going to have to remember. Amen. Right. And uh, we might reverse that if we chose to in our mind. And say this. There's some things you can't afford to forget. Well, that's right. There's some yeah. things you're going to have to continually reaffirm in your mind. And uh, he said if you don't do that when you cross over it. If you don't do that, you'll forget where you came from. Yeah. You'll forget what God's done for you. You'll forget who brought you to this place in the first day. Yeah. And he said, I want to make sure that there's some things uh, that you remember. Amen. Yeah. Why don't you look at your text with me? He, he begins in verse number 18 by saying, Thou shalt remember then. Verse number 22 is a, is a mirror of verse number 18. And again, Moses, speaking on behalf of the Lord, said, Thou shalt remember. Amen. And that's why I'm saying to you this evening that, that, that there is a commandment from God and that, and that we're going to have to remember some things and, and before we enter into the blessings that God has supplied for us. Somebody say amen. Now if I say that, would you not agree with me today? And that we are here this morning seeking uh, the blessings of God. Amen. 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 If you prayed for the meeting this morning, and if you prayed for these days of revival, you're asking God to bestow a blessing in our direction. Amen. 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 We're asking God to allow us to worship. We're asking God to speak to our hearts. Uh, and Brother Ricky said we're asking God to revive us or to and put some life back in us yeah, to restore yeah, that which yeah. we seemingly have had taken away from us. Uh, we're asking God to give the preacher liberty and to send yeah, the message. Yeah. Are, are we not in agreement this morning and that what we're looking for is the blessings of God? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just like the nation of Israel was seeking the physical blessings in a house or a, a field of corn or a vineyard, you and I, are seeking the spiritual blessings of God. We need that restoration. Amen. 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 I said we need that restoration. Amen. Amen. We need God to step into our lives. I, I've often said this revival. It's not my notes. I'm just going to chase this rabbit. But I've often said this. That revival uh, is necessitated by 
our life, by our situation, by our service, amen. Yeah. Yeah. And by the burdens that we bear, by the cares that we carry, somebody help me right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The word revival means to return breath, literally. It means to put the breath back. Amen. You ever had anything knock the breath out of you? Amen. amen. You ever had it, amen, sometimes? We need revival like we need CPR. It's, right. a, it's right. an emergency situation. Yes. If God doesn't step in, you won't be here in a week or two. Right. Right. Yeah. If God doesn't step in, I wouldn't count you in for the house of God a year from now. Right. If God doesn't step in, you'll be on the sidelines or you'll be in sin. Yeah. Amen. Or God forbid you'll be dead. Somebody say it right there. I'm telling you, we need CPR. It's an emergency emergency yes, situation. Sir. Yeah. That's not going to be an easy situation. Right. You ever watch right. anybody administer CPR that's trained professionally and knows what they're doing? I'm telling you, that act of resuscitation, it, 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 it takes great pain on the, on the, on the individual and that requires it. You'll watch that cage change. And you'll watch that chest cave in. You'll listen to those ribs breaking. Uh, sure. and, but it doesn't matter because if we don't get them to breathe it again, and they're going to die on the yes, And right. sometimes we need a revival in an emergency situation. Right. We need CPR. Amen. Right. Sometimes revival is just an opportunity for refreshment. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Have you ever been out working on a hot summer day, cutting grass or doing something outside? Maybe you work outside for a living and and uh, and uh, you you're working hard and the the sun and the heat and the weather is drawing all of your strength and all yeah. of your energy. Yeah. And, uh, and at some point, you just kind of lean back on your tools and a little bit of a breeze begins to flow. And, and when that breeze begins to flow and it begins to blow across your sweaty brow, and there's a sense, are you not, uh, that you've been uh, you've been restored. You've got a little bit of your energy back. And, uh, and that's how revival comes sometimes. In the midst of your labor. <laughs> In the midst of your burdens, it gives you an opportunity to receive a little refreshment from Amen. the Lord. Yeah. And but then uh, there's that time of rest. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and uh, by the way, the book of Acts said that there's times of refreshing. Yeah. And he describes where they come from. They come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah. And then there's a third principle. And sometimes it's resuscitation. And sometimes it's refreshment. And but sometimes it's just rest. You need to break loose from the burden. You need to come apart from the world. And you need to allow God to speak to your heart. And to feed your soul. And to whatever condition you find yourself in. And whatever degree of need you find in your own life. I suspect that all of us would be in agreement there's not one of us uh, that from the back views to the pulpit uh, that, that does not stand in need uh, of revival. Hey, 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 we need God. something hey, from God. Hey, uh, hey, Israel hey. stood in the valley and looked toward the promised land. And God said, I have some things promised uh, to you. I have some things provided for you. I have some things purposed for you. But he said, you're going to have to remember. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to use yeah. that as a little thought preach uh, on this subject this morning. I'm preaching on remembrance uh, that brings revival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say this, uh, that, that before we ever go forward, uh, we'll have to look backward. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll have to learn from our yesterdays uh, if we're going to proceed in our tomorrows. Yeah. Uh, there's a remembrance in the text uh, that, that will bring revival. Write these things down. Number one, uh, I believe remembering that your ruin uh, will bring revival. Look at verse number 18 with me again. Here's the first thing that Moses says uh, uh, to the nation of Israel. He said, but thou shalt remember that, that thou was a bondman uh, in Egypt. Amen. Uh, thou will remember, thou shalt remember that, that thou wast a bondman in Egypt. Uh, 
you know what he pictures for us? Something very dark. Yeah. Something very defeated and discouraged. Amen. Amen. He said you were a bondman in the land of Egypt. Now well, Paul's pushed Paul's and rejoiced that he said what? <laughs> You're not there anymore, but you used to be. Yeah. 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 If we're ever going to go forward and inherit God's blessings, uh, we'll have to look back at where he found us at. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, when the Lord found you, yeah. he is ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's not think more of ourselves than we all. Amen. Amen. We all cleaned up pretty nice for Sunday morning. Amen. You smell pretty good and you look decent. Amen. But you had no way. It's just ruined. That. Yes. Man, yeah. where I go, I can't preach like this because they don't know what the word ruined is. Amen. 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 You're preaching the city and they don't get it. Amen. Yes. You've got to watch it if you're preaching with a translator. They don't always have a, a, yeah. a, 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 a significant word in their, in their dialect or their language. But, but, but I think up here in Sanford, uh, you folks probably know what ruined is. Amen. Amen. I tell people my mama had a smell test for what was ruined. Amen. <laughs> you stopped by the house and 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 and, and I needed a little something. You know, you go look in the refrigerator and there's a little bit of milk in a jug or there's some casserole from last Sunday sitting in a Tupperware dish or a, or a used buttercup. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. 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 And, uh, and uh, you want to know if that pack of lunch meat still any good? You say, hey, Mom, is the lunch meat good or the milk good or is that casserole still good? And Mom always said, I don't know. She said, bring it here let me smell it. <laughs> <laughs> bring it over here and let me smell it. Amen. Uh, oh, by the way, she didn't trust my ability to smell it. <laughs> Amen. I've preached this message a dozen times, I guess, or more. But I've never preached that. Amen. Yeah. But Mom never did trust me to smell it. Uh, sometimes my snows didn't smell right. Amen. Yeah. But I'm telling you, if you trust uh, yourself to determine if you're ruined or not, you probably won't ever think we're ruined. Amen. 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 It's not about what I think. Yeah. It's about what you thought. Amen. 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 And then mom would say, bring it over and smell it. And let me smell it. And I'd, I'd take it over there and she'd smell the milk or the ham or the casserole. And then she'd pronounce her verdict, Brother Ricky. Yeah. And she'd say, oh, it's all right. Go ahead and eat it. Uh, or drink it. Or she might say, oh, no. That. When she smelled it, she'd say, that's ruined. Uh, yeah. And don't throw it in the garbage can. Don't put it back in the fridge. Uh, and don't leave it out on the countertop. It's not good for anything uh, except put it in the garbage heap. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, I say, that's where I was. Uh, oh, and oh, there, oh, that's, oh, where oh, was. Yeah. that's where Israel was. He uh, said, she's in Egypt. Yeah. 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 He's in Egypt. And he's a bondsman in the land of Egypt. You know, what you see in that text is a picture of their depravity. Uh, uh, but the idea of something that, ruined, that is ruined simply implies that it has no value Amen. Yes, right. There's no worth in it. Uh, that's where we were in our own lives and in our own selves. We had no worth. Uh, it, it is a picture of our spiritual depravity. Uh, yes, they're yes. down in Egypt, a picture, a type of the world. Uh, and uh, and uh, Moses said, don't forget uh, that, that you couldn't get out of the mess you see. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. You had yes, evil taskmasters that controlled you. Uh, right. Man, I'm telling you, most of us uh, that had sin that controlled us. Uh, Amen. We were we were we were addicted to sin and uh, we were addicted to that which satisfies the flesh. Amen. Now, right. yeah. You might not have been an alcoholic and you might not have been on drugs. Yeah. But sin had a hold of you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like we could not yeah. help ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. The word yeah. depraved is a misused word that yeah. by some that have a heretical and theology. Yeah. And the way I say depraved is a Bible principle. Yeah. It implies that unless God steps in, yeah. you cannot help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where yeah. I was for the yeah. Right. Speaks about my depravity. I was in Egypt. It speaks about my debt. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The Bible uses an interesting expression in verse 18. Thou wast a bondman in Egypt. 
Now, now, if you study these uh, Old Testament look books, and there's several occasions when that the Lord used a different word to describe Israel's condition down in Egypt. He talks about them being slaves. But in this text, he doesn't talk about them being slaves. And the rather, he talks about them being bondsmen. Now, bondsmen is different than a slave. And yet, they're both the same. And the same or singular quality is they're both, they're both under the restriction of another. Uh -huh. Amen. They're both the captive of somebody else. The difference is that a slave has been overtaken. A slave has encountered somebody that's bigger than he is. But a bondsman is somebody that is there because of the choice that they made. Uh -huh. Because of the consequences of their actions and their deeds. Amen. And God said, Israel, you were a bondsman down in the land of Egypt. That means you had a debt to pay that you could not pay. Amen. 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 You had a debt to pay yeah, and that you could not pay. The Bible said that the wages of sin was death. Oh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yes. Brother Ricky, we, we were indebted because of our sin. And we couldn't pay our sin debt. And it had been called due. And but thank God he paid the debt. He paid the debt. We better remember we were indebted. We better remember we were depraved. Then let me say this. We better remember we were defeated. Yes. That's right. That's good. Man, That's good. Israel probably, we don't know. We don't have census records to prove it. But but there's a good possibility and probability that Israel outnumbered Egypt when they came out of the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I mean, uh, I don't have a lot of proof as far as maybe scriptural reference, but I can tell you this much. They had endured the plagues. Uh -huh. God had unleashed ten significant judgments against the nation of Israel. Excuse me, against the nation of Egypt while Israel was still down in Egypt. And those ten plagues had literally decimated the land. Yes, sir. Yes, had taken sir. everything they could eat. It had taught, destroyed the crops in the field. It destroyed the orchards and the vineyards. It had destroyed the, the, the cattle in the, in the fields. They, and then it had visited their households. And, uh, and, uh, and the firstborn of every household had, uh, had died because of the plagues. When they came after the nation of Israel at the crossing of the Red Sea, the best that Egypt could do was 600 chariots and horsemen. Huh? And now I'm talking about a nation. A nation. And, and yet, and yet the, the scholars that are maybe wiser than I that have studied historical accounts passed down from generations consider that there may have been upwards of 2 million people that came out of the land of Egypt to head to the promised land. Yes, sir. Two, 2 million people. Can you imagine that? Two million people that God would sustain and care for in the middle of the desert. Amen. Uh, and uh, and uh, to give you a perspective, everything needs perspective. I read this one time. They said that that took for uh, the nation of Israel, if there was two million of them, listen to this now, if there was two million of them, for them to survive a day in the wilderness with their cattle would require a hundred and eighty Tanker cars of water every day. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, I'll get a misconception. We read over there where Moses spoke to rock and, and water came out. We think he opened up a drinking fountain. How'd you like to stand in line with two million of your closest friends? <laughs> Amen. 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 No, I don't think it happened that way. Amen. Niagara Falls opened up and the yeah. waters gushed yeah. out and the people could drink and their cattle could drink. One man said that, that for them to have crossed over the Red Sea in a single night would have required a line nearly five miles wide. <laughs> wow. God, God, God didn't even cut an interstate. I, I mean, he got a five-mile swatch through the Red Sea. Right? Amen. 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 But what I'm simply saying to you is they outnumbered them. There was no plagues in Israel. Goshen didn't yeah. experience the things that Egypt had explored. They were not weakened. They had not had the death, the death angel came, but because of the blood, they were spared.
spared the judgment of God. Yeah. And, and yet they could not defend themselves. Yeah. They could not deliver themselves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, they were defeated. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you how many times before you got saved, how many times did you make a promise? Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to yeah. change. I'm going to uh, stop. I'll turn over a new leaf. You and you just went back to the same hell hole. And you yeah. went back to the same mud puddle that you've been wallowing in for the other days of your life. That's because you was a defeated soul. Yeah, Amen. Amen. You just defeated. Yeah. That's the picture that we have. Yeah. He said, y'all remember your ruin, that you had no way out, that you could not save yourselves. That you were lost without God. What a terrible expression. Lost without God. Now, look at our text again. Verse number 18. I'll get one more this morning. I want you to not only see the Bible speaks about remembering our ruin. But then in verse 18 it said, And the Lord thy God redeemed thee these. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's a Holy Ghost conjunction as that verse continues. Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bond in Egypt, comma. Then there's a conjunction and. Yeah, yeah. If you use a conjunction and, it implies that the previous statement is correct. Uh huh. Uh huh. There's an accuracy in the statement. Thou wast a bondman in Egypt. You were depraved. You were in debt. You were defeated. Right. Oh, and while we was in a mess, and yeah. not when we got better, and yeah. the Lord thy God. <laughs> Can I insert a word right there? I heard you. <laughs> Amen. Came to help you. Yeah. And, yeah. and the Lord thy God delivered the events. Amen. Amen. If you and I are ever going to enjoy revival, you'll have to remember your ruin. Yeah. Yeah. You have to remember where he found you. Yeah. You have to remember how lost you were. Yes. Amen. I'll tell you, you'll have to remember your redemption. Amen. Oh, let us not be, let us not be guilty of forgetting what Christ has done Amen. to save us. Amen. 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 I wonder Amen. how dim Calvary grows in our minds. Yes. Listen to that. Amen. I wonder how dim Calvary grows in our minds. Do we daily visit the foot of the cross? And do we allow the Holy Ghost to remind us of what Christ has done on our behalf? Yeah. Number one, I want you to notice in this text, I thought about Romans 5, that God commendeth his love toward us. Yeah. In the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Amen. Not when they got better. But now God's son died in our place. Notice their deliverer. We're talking about our redemption. The Lord thy God redeemed thee then. And I want you to notice their deliverer. There's three words used in the text to describe the deliverer. Notice it. And he said, Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt. And here's the three words. The, really four, I guess we use the word thee. And the Lord, thy God, redeemed thee. Yes, sir. Amen. The Lord, thy God. Hey, if you're ever going to have revival, you'll have to think about your deliverer. Yes, amen. amen. Listen. You'll have to remember the one that has brought you out of the mess you see in. Amen. Amen. You didn't do it. The preacher didn't do it. The church didn't do it. Your mama didn't do it. Amen. But it was the Lord. And that delivered you. Amen. The Lord yes. thy God. Notice the phrase, the word Lord in your Bible. Look there, it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. We understand that's the that's the, trans the transliterated word for Jehovah. Amen. In other words, our Bible translators are giving us a word to remind us there's no question about whom this individual is. Amen. 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 It's not the little G gods of the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hittites. It's not all those idolic uh, idol gods of the Egyptians. And that the Lord that has brought you out of the mess is in is Jehovah. Amen. He's the Lord. Amen. He's the one that is in authority. He's the one that calls the shot. And the Bible uses the expression, he's the self-existent. 
existing one. Yes, sir. Amen. He just always has been. Yes. And he always will be. Yes. That speaks about an authority. Yes. God has authority. Yes. Amen. Yes. Wait a minute. He's not done. He said he's the Lord thy God. The last word in that little expression is the word God. Yes. El Shaddai. Yes. It means almighty one. Yeah. It's a reflection of his ability. Lord is a reflection of his authority. Yeah. But God is a reflection of his ability. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad, hey, listen. I'm glad that he's not only the God that can, but he's the God that has the authority to do it. Amen. I, I've known sometimes when I, there was a situation where I might have had authority to act, but I didn't have the ability to do anything about it. Uh -huh. I'm glad that's not true with our Lord. Amen. Because he both has authority oh, yeah. and he has ability. Amen. Amen. By the way, since we're talking about redemption, let me explain what the authority and the ability of God is. Romans chapter 1, verse number 16. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That word power means that it is God, the gospel. That is what the gospel reflects. The gospel is God's authority to save. And the gospel is God's ability to save. Amen. 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 The Bible teaches us the gospel is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That according to the scriptures established his authority. He did it the way God wanted him to. Amen. Amen. And then because he died for our sins and was buried and rose again, that's his ability. Yeah. He has covered our sin debt. Amen. He's made a way with his own blood. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's authority. He's God. That's ability. But I really like that little middle word. It's the word thy. It doesn't deserve a capital T, does it? It's you and me. He's the Lord thy God. <laughs> well, that brought it personal. He's not just the Lord God. Mm. He's the Lord thy God. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Hey, Israel, he knew where you was. Yeah. Hey, Israel, he didn't forget about you. Amen. Hey, Israel, he didn't forget the covenant and the promise that he made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. Yeah. He, he hadn't forgot that you was down in Egypt. Amen. And that word thy speaks about his personal relationship mm. with you and I. Therefore, it speaks about his accessibility. Amen. I'm glad he's not a Christian. Amen. Do you think Amen. that cannot be reached with the feelings of our infirmity? I'm glad that he's an ever-present help. If the great and trouble he is, my God, Amen. he's mine. He's mine. He's mine. I'm his. The songwriter said, and he's mine. God. Notice the deliverer, then notice the deed. The Lord thy God redeemed thee. Uh -huh. I know that helps you, that helps me. I, yeah, I like yeah. the way the word sounds. It rolls yeah. off of your tongue and yeah. it's pleasant to the ears. I have been redeemed. I've been bought with a price. I did have a debt, but it's been settled. Redemption is identified in this verse has to do with the the, the, the the Jewish ideology of a kinsman redeemer. We usually use the book of Ruth to explain that because, yeah. because uh, Ruth comes back to the land of Bethlehem and you remember Boaz says there's a near kinsman but he wouldn't do his part. And so Boaz redeems her as the next of kin. And that kinsman relationship or that kinsman redeemer According to the tradition of the Jews and some scriptural principle, it had three qualities that had to be that had to be met. Number one, there had to be the right relationship. He had to be the next of kin. Uh -huh. If it wasn't the next of kin, he didn't have a right to redeem. Yes, sir. Amen. And he couldn't exercise his right to redeem. Number two, he had to have the right resources. If he wanted to redeem, but he didn't have the money to pay the debt, he couldn't be a redeemer. It wasn't a freebie. It cost somebody something. 
Number three, he had to be ready. He was not, uh, he was not bound by the law to redeem. There were certain circumstances. If a man had a brother and the brother married, he was unable to raise up children. Then that, then that brother was 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 bound to marry that brother, and raise up children to his to his deceased brother. But if it's just a near kin, as it was in like the story of Boaz and Ruth, there's no there's no obligation. It, it, it it's not an act of requirement. It's an act of will. Yeah. Yeah. It's because the one who has the resources and the one who has the right. Uh, is ready to redeem. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm glad that I, I have a kinsman redeemer and he has the right relationship yeah. because yeah. that the word was made flesh. Yeah. And yeah. the world to us. Amen. Yeah. That because the God of heaven took all yeah. the love yeah. of humanity yeah. and because he went to do no sin yeah. was made so sin. Yeah. I yeah. he has the right yeah. relationship. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad he has the right resources. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. In him was no sin. The Bible said not guile. There was no guile in his mouth. He never called an evil fault, but he died anyway. And it's his righteousness that gives him the resources. And to be a redeemer. Amen. Then, amen. There's the right readiness. He didn't have to. <laughs> Let me say that again. He didn't have to. Right, right. But he yeah. chose to. Amen. He set his face as a flint to walk Jerusalem, knowing what waited on the other side of the wall. But he went anyway. He knew what Calvary entailed. But he went anyway. He knew yeah. the separation from his father. But he went Amen. anyway. I thought he was a ready redeemer. Yeah. You and I have a redeemer. Amen. 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 We'll close this morning with this. Notice the delight. Sometimes words in our Bible are overlooked because they seem to be insignificant. But if you take another look, God sometimes puts great truth in small places. Look at verse 18. Thou to thou shalt remember thou was to bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. If that's as far as we got, that'd be all right. There's a colon there in your Bible. If that colon was moved up, that'd be all right. Be all right. The Lord thy God redeemed me. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that next word. That's an old English word. You're not going to use it at work tomorrow. Vince. The Lord thy God redeemed thee. Vince. And then our critics of our good King James Bible get all bent out of shape. Nobody understands about it. You don't understand what Vince is. It means somewhere you're not today. It's not where you are now. <laughs> and, yeah, man, yeah. There's a delight in the text. He didn't leave me where he found me. Hey, Glory hey, God. God. He didn't leave oh, me in my sin. He didn't oh. leave me in, my, in the hog pit. Oh, I'm glad that it brought me out. Oh, I said it brought me out. Oh, I said it brought me out. Oh, oh, I'm oh, not what I used to be. I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I used to be. Hosea's wife. Oh yeah, amen. Was a woman of the, a woman of the, of the of the pagans and the heathens that dwelt amongst them. He married her, had children with her, and she became unfaithful to him, and she ran off to the temple. You know the story. <laughs> the temple got to the place where they had no use for it. Was a place of temple prostitution. Because of her age, she was of no value. So the next thing that would happen, she'd be sold as a common slave. Word come to Hosea. Mm -hmm. Gomer's down in the auction house. At the oh, auction my. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. And uh, mm. he got up early that morning, got everything he could get. Mm. He oh. knew. Goes down to the auction house and waits until the time comes and Gomer's brought before the crowd. And, and, uh, the bidding begins. She might be a good kitchen slave. She probably could work a few more years in the field. The bidding starts, and you know the story. I'll skip some of that. In the end, Hosea had bid 15 pieces of silver, a portion of barley, 
That's about all he had. And the adding in of that barley meant he'd give everything that he had. He, he, he'd taken every bit that he possessed, but he'd bought her. He pays the clerk. She's probably bound. He orders them to take the veil, take the, take the chains off. Did you hear the men talking? Can you hear them talking? They say that's his wife. They say that's his wife. She did him wrong. They, they, they say that he, he bought her, even though she'd been unfaithful to him and wouldn't come home to his children. They probably laughed a little bit. They might have made a statement like this. Let's hang around and see. I bet there's going to be a beating today. They were a violent society. They liked to see the violence. I imagine they thought he, he may kill her today. And by the way, he had every justifiable right yeah. to do that. He could have left her bound up in the stocks. All night. All night. But he did. Uh, I imagine she was trembling when the clerk handed him the key. Oh, this is it. I'll pay for my deeds today. <laughs> yeah. If he unlocked those things, she probably cowered her down, shielded herself, expecting the blow from his hand, from his fist, from the whip, rod. But rather than get a blow, she watched as he stood her up, <laughs> began to run up the place where the bonds had been on her hands until the circulation returned. Begin to stroke her hair back. Lord. Might have kissed her on the cheek. <laughs> and she said, What are you going to do now? And she said, He said, Go. We're going to go home. <laughs> You're my wife. We're going to go home. <laughs> and she was in bonds when he arrived, but she walked out with his hand in hers. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he didn't leave me where he found me. Come on, get with all into the boundaries of sin. I, I know he had not finished with me. He's not there yet. But I'm going to tell you, there's a man to my life as a believer. I'm not where I used to be. Bless his name. 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 Bless Bless his name. 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 Number one, you have to remember you is ruined. Don't think a lot of yourself. But he said, number two, remember your redemption. Look what he's done for you and I. Look what he has done for you and I. Amen. I sure would like God to do something in this place. I could use something. Amen. Could you? Could you? A little reviving in your spirit. You say, preacher, does that mean I, I, I don't have a long list of sins? I've not been out at the honky tonk or getting drunk on Saturday. And I'd say you had. I'm just telling you, we get to a place where life closes in yeah. and squashes the life out of us. Yeah. And when it happens, we need revival. God knows we could use a little reviving in the midst of our bondage. And the Lord whispers, I got it. But you're going to have to remember where you was and what I've done for you mm. for me to give you what i got for you. Let's stand on our feet. Heads are bowed, eyes closed. I'll have them just come and play over the hand. Altars are open. If you need to come, maybe you just want to come and say, Lord, thank you for saving me. And then while you're there, you can say, Lord, put me in a mind where I can have revival. Put me in a place where you do something in my heart. Put me in a place where I can hear when you speak.